Good evening! Woo! Welcome to 559! I welcome everyone. I can see many people here, um, but I want to see you more better. And if you can you stand your feet and could you come out? Don't be shy. This is what we always do in Friday Friday night, right? <laughs> Don't be a stranger. <laughs> you already know that what we need to do. <laughs> come on, come on. Don't be shy. It's not the first time that you came here. Come closer, come closer, come closer here, come closer, come closer. I want to see your face. I cannot really see it because of light. Come on. Here, come closer, come closer. If it is the first time, your friends, please help us to come in front. Hands by hand. Come closer, come closer. I want to see your face. Okay, look at your neighbor. Ask, how are you? Look at, look at, I have, I have a little small talk. How are you? It's good? It's good? How are you? What is good? Huh? How are you? Hey, let's greet each other one. Say this sentence. You're in a right place. Say your neighbor. You're, You're in a right, right place. place. You're in a right no, place no, in no, five, no, five, no, five, five no, nine. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. Hey, you're really, truly, you're in the right place in Friday night. Yeah. There's so much fun in outside. It seems like, but you know what? We're gonna have much fun here tonight, amen? Yes, yes. Okay, are you ready to fun? Yeah. Are you ready to have fun? Yeah. Come on, come on, church. Okay, then let's do that. Come on, Leah. Then, then. I have a little bump. Let's go on there like this. Yahweh, 
Christ, amen? Amen, amen. There's only one person. There's only one person in a whole human history. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. He yeah. died for your sin and he resurrected. Amen. 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 Hey. amen. I search and don't find nobody like Jesus. I search and don't find nobody. Is that like ready? I search and I found nobody like Jesus. 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 I search and I find nobody like Jesus. I search and I find nobody like Jesus. I search and I find nobody like Jesus. Love it on my soul. 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 Nobody like. It's time to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on. Woo. Hands up, hands up. Yes, 
song fake love but I will tell you the true love tonight and we'll proclaim that this love is forever and more amen yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. forever 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 in your love forever forever, forever. oh come on chair you in your love forever Oh, 
song come let's sing together let's go it's your time let's go hands up hands up Goodbye yesterday, I'm leaving 
sort of for something to see I'm dancing on the grave that I was feeling Goodbye yesterday I'm leaning in the light of a new day I won't waste another minute in my old ways Praise the Lord Come on, you born Goodbye yesterday The Spirit of the Lord is upon me I got resurrection in my
One more time, only voice. Praise the Lord, I've been born it. again. Goodbye yesterday. I'm living in the light of a new day. I won't waste another minute in my old ways. Praise the Lord, I've been born again.
big so thin now in the heaven as a glory fill this place you alone deserve our praise your name above our name be exalted now in the heavens as we glory fill this place you alone deserve our praise your name above our name be exalted now in the heavens as your glory
I think some of the others on the seat, they worried. Maybe this church will fall down when you jump, but no way. I believe tonight when you dance, when you sing, when you jump, Satan's stronghold fall down, fell down. Do you believe? Amen, 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 amen. When we jump, when we dance, when we like a shout, shout out Jesus' name, Satan's stronghold already fell down, and then this next generation of God's kingdom, you, are, you will arise. Amen. 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 Thank God. Uh, when you really go to one another close, you will see the smell. Because la- yesterday and today, we didn't have power. And can you imagine more than 70 people living together without power for two days? Wow. It was a something, right? Did you like it? Uh, oh, but it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, but you know, our God is amazing God. Amen. 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 Even though there was no power, we had a God's power. Amen. Right? We have a God's power. Do you have a God's power? No matter what happened, we have a God's power. And God always, always gives us the best thing. Amen. Yes. And tonight, tonight, God Prepare the best message for all of you. Do you know who's this? Yeah, God's messenger. She is one of our best and wonderful favorite speaker, uh, Dr. Julie, Dr. Julie Thomas. She has been with us maybe about two, three years, and she's an amazing messenger from God, especially she specializes God's gospel, goodness, and grace, and love message. So tonight, I think... We just got through yesterday and today without power. Just ca- power came back about three hours ago. I didn't take shower. I didn't brush, but it's okay. We are Jesus smelling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We smell Jesus, and we, we are Jesus perfume. It doesn't matter. I didn't brush, but it's okay. Come to me. I'm going to really show you Jesus smell. But, you know, God covers all. Amen. God, God's love covers all of us. And then tonight, God is going to bless us with God's best message. Are you ready? Are you ready? Open your heart. Pray. So the Holy Spirit comes to you and melt your heart. Is there anything callous in your heart? Holy Spirit, please come. Touch our heart. Help us to make a beautiful, good soil. So tonight, when your message is delivered by Dr. Julie... Please, tell us. Help us to receive your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dr. Julie Thomas. Let's give her a big hand. Yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It's always so good to be in the house of the Lord, especially dancing. How many of you are energized? I love that song, We Worship You. Hallelujah. We worship you. This is why we are here, to worship Jesus. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know, Pastor, we pray, but we all pray together. So for me, I don't have any time to waste. So when I come here and preach, it has to matter. Okay? So everybody needs to understand what God is speaking. It's not me speaking, but God is speaking through me. So everyone needs to get what God intended you to get. Everybody uh, hears the same message, but different voices. So we're going to pray. Papa, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time, God. Lord, thank you for the worship time, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, that all of us gather together from nations, from different countries, different languages. Some of us don't even speak English, God. Some of us don't speak Korean or other languages. But God, we speak your language, which is the love language, God. Lord, I thank you. Even when I speak in English, God, you, Holy Spirit, Translate it to the right words, to the right people in the name of Jesus, God. None of the word fall down 
in vain. I pray that it multiplies to 30, 60, and 100 fold return, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Today I'm going to talk about the power of words. Okay? Our words have tremendous amount of power. Why? Because we are the children of God. That's why. If we are not just mere human beings, but we are the children of the Most High God. Because Bible says we have the authority to trample against serpents and scorpions and nothing will harm us. Why is that? Why do we have the authority to trample against serpents and scorpions? Serpents and scorpions are the devils and demonic realms. We have the power to trample against all of the demonic realm and nothing will harm us. Okay, which means that once you are in the kingdom of God, God gave all of us his power and authority. We have the power and authority in this kingdom to trample against anything that comes against us. Because of it, our words have power. Because we have authority. So therefore, because God has given us the authority, well, the people who have authority have power to speak. In the word of God, you hear about centurion story. You know, centurion had a servant who was sick. Centurion, centurion means he's a commander of the army. About 100 soldiers are under him. So he's a big, big boss. So his servant got sick and he came to Jesus and said, what? Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. All you have to do is speak the word. And he said an analogy because I know I am a man of authority, so I understand that my words matter. When I speak, things happen. So therefore, I know you, Jesus, you are a man of authority. You don't need to come all the way. It's not the presence that heals. It's your words that heal. Amen? So therefore, we are the ambassador of Jesus. So therefore, our words matter. Our words heal. Our words encourage. Our words esteem other people. At the same time, our words can kill. Our words can destroy. Our words can discourage people. Because that is the power that we have, God has given. I want to get that foundation straight. Because some of you might believe, oh no, I'm just a mere human being. My words doesn't have power. Only God's words have power. That is wrong because you are the ambassador of Jesus in this earthly realm. Therefore, when you speak, it is as if Jesus is speaking, which is why you cannot use your words unwisely. You cannot just speak unnecessary words because words have tremendous amount of power. Amen? Amen. I am, I, those of you know that I work in, at Johnson & Johnson, I lead a large organization. So today morning, I, I was at work, and I, we were, I was saying, I, we were just in the corridor to some of my team members. Um, they said, Julie, when your email comes, and I, don't, I rarely send requests to my team members, when, my, when I send the email out, within an hour... The answer, I receive the answer. Because when I send it to my email, everybody, Julie needs this. Julie needs this. We got to get this done. Guys, Julie needs to get, let's get, get together and take action and make it happen. So why? That's why I cannot say unnecessary things at work. Because if I say things, people will start unnecessary wasting time. So I have to be very careful what I speak and what I don't speak. So I have to say, if I need something urgently, I will say, urgent. Can you please get back to me by the end of today? Otherwise, people think it's super urgent and they will 
they, they won't do anything and, and get everything done within one hour. I don't need it in one hour. So they think it's very urgent. Julie asked for it, it's urgent. So if I don't need anything urgent, I always say, not urgent. Oh, then they're like, oh, it's not urgent, which means we can wait until probably the end of the day or tomorrow. And sometimes I get not urgent. I only need it by the end of the week because it has to be clear because my words have power because people will say, people will start shaking. People will start moving. Oh my God, she needs something. We got to get it done. ASAP, ASAP. ASAP means as soon as possible. Okay, we got to get it done. So that's why I know that I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ wherever I go. My words have power. Your words have power. You might not be a vice president in earthly realm. However, you are ambassador of Jesus Christ. That is more than a vice president, more than a CEO. You have tremendous amount of power to move and shake things. So be careful with what you say and how you do it. So um, the key word here is Proverbs chapter 18. Everyone knows this verse. If you can turn. 18, 21. Death and life are the power, are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Take it very seriously. Amen. Some facts here. You know, we people speak about 10,000 words a day. Normal people. And listen to this. Do you think women speak more than men? No. Science, no. <laughs> it's actually false. It's not proven that women speak more than men. It's really the same. It, because some women speak a lot, some men speak a lot. So it's all average. It's uh, about 10,000 words per day. Okay? So if we have, since we speak that many words, do you know how the words comes out of your mouth? Little signs. Anyone know? So you have the frontal lobe of the brain. Frontal lobe is right here. This is the executive functions. This is the function that God has given us for strategic planning, analyzing, critical thinking. It's all from the frontal lobe. So what happens is when you, the thoughts go into the frontal left lobe, it's the left brain, left lobe, and thought starts forming and it transfers to the tongue, the receptors in the tongue, and you start speaking. It is actually a higher order function, which is why no animals can speak languages. Why is that? Because God breathed his his um, br breath into our mouth. So we became like, kind of like God. You know what I mean? If you're not God, absolutely not. But really in the image of God that we can speak language. When you think about how anybody can articulate thoughts, coherent, logical thoughts, it's amazing how God created us. Okay, so this is important to know that God, it is a higher order function. No animals can speak the word. Okay, so now some characteristics of the spoken word. I'm going to go over five things that's written in the Bible and also from my own testimony because I don't speak anything because I'm not a Bible teacher. I'm a person who actually works at a job. However, God always told me that I need to speak from my own life. I'm not allowed to go look and search and uh, from dictionaries and craft a message. I'm not, I'm not allowed. God doesn't allow me to do that. God said that I can only speak what I live. This is why God has taught me the power of the words, which is why I'm speaking from my own testimony what God has taught me. It is not from anywhere. I didn't, I didn't research any books. It is from my own testimony. The first foremost, number one, words can create. What is the example of words creation? God created heaven and the earth using what? Words. Genesis 1-3 says, 
Let there be light. Amen? Let there be light. That's what God said. My Papa God, I call him my Papa, it's Abba Father, said, let there be light. And there was light. There was light. He had to speak the word into existence. He is God. Yet he could have thought about it. It could have happened. No, he spoke it. With the words he spoke, says, let there be light, and there, there, there is light. So what does this mean? We are created by the image of God. So we have creative power. You can create your own destinies using good words, faith-filled words, word of God. You need to speak it and create it. Don't just sit around and say, oh, you know what? It is my destiny. It is how I am. I don't, I'm not that smart. I can't really uh, understand math. I don't, I can't understand English. It's too complex. I can't get a job. I can't do, no, no. That is negative words. You are, uh, you are creating death by that words. Because what did the word of God say? Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So when you say negative words, you're creating death into the situation. I really want everybody to understand the seriousness of it. It really is very important to understand. These are some basic principles God taught me because I never knew this growing up. I used to be so negative, believe it or not. I'm like, oh, my God, this pharmacology is so hard. Anatomy, physiology is too much memorization without realizing that I'm just creating death into that situation. No, God gave us the example that with his words, he created the entire beautiful universe that you see is created by God. That is an example. You can create. Amen. 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 You can create a beautiful universe of your own by the words that you speak. Don't complain. Don't whine about the situation. You don't realize what you're saying. Your words have power. Amen. So that's number one. Words create. Okay. Say, say it with me. Words create. Yes, amen. The second point is, at the same time, words destroy. Aha. Uh -huh. What did I say? Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Words can create and words can destroy. Okay. The story that God always, um, always uh, talks to me about is Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13 Verses 27. Okay, the story about the spies. You know Moses. Moses said, okay, guys, we're going to uh, uh, conquer Canaan. Twelve of you, the leaders of the twelve tribes, go and check it out. Just check it out. See how, hey, how many buildings you have. What kind of flowers they have? What is the architecture of the land? What do the people look like? Is it big, small? Are they nice or kind? Just check the whole land out and come back to me. So what happened? What? 1327. Ten of the spies, ten of the spies said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, there you go, the people who dwell in the land are strong. Their cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. You know, Anak are giants. Those are giants. Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of Jordan. I'm going to go over 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. 
and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw it are men of great stature there we saw the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight and the next word says that's the next chapter numbers 14 says so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept the whole night and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation said to them if only we had died in the land of Egypt you see 10 people's report just 10 these are millions of people following but 10 mere 10 people report that was bad that really made the whole congregation depressed they were so downtrodden this is the power of the words and none of them except jo um, joshua and caleb was able to see the city everybody died because of the 10 spies gave the wrong report and they spoke it out they spoke out loud we are not able to do it they're stronger than I we are just like grasshoppers you know what the funny thing is they did say in the humanly realm that's accurate that is the accurate report that is the right report but that is not a faith-filled report you're not supposed to call out what is you're not some let me let's see if you might be struggling in some subjects to learn at college or school you're not out you're not supposed to call that out oh my god it is so hard although that is true don't say it with your words this is exactly what happened here what they said was correct they did not lie this is not a lie yet everybody got depressed and the entire gang millions of people got perished in the wilderness they die death and life are in the power of your tongue amen death and life are in the power of, of your tongue don't say negative words don't say lack of faith it will it really literally can 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 make your dreams your vision your purpose everything get died because of your words amen so the first one is words create second is words can destroy okay the third one words can fight temptation okay tell me who fought the temptation with words Jesus amen amen with the word that is the word of God he fought the devil himself by the word of God through uh, temptation what what were the three stones to bread worship the devil and testing God all three of the test was passed with flying colors because of the word of God Jesus memorized the scriptures and although devil was twisting the scriptures Jesus actually knew the accurate interpretation of the scripture and with that he was able to fight the demonic realm the devil himself and devil had to run away amen thank you Jesus so we we also need any time anybody get into any type of temptation let me tell you any type of everybody has has to go through temptation no matter what everybody has to go through temptation Jesus had to go through temptation so let alone we we have to go through temptation the only way to fight against temptation is by the word of God which is why it's extremely important to memorize scriptures memorizing scriptures should be a practice for a Christian you need to memorize as much scriptures as you can 
and not only just memorize it. I see people memorizing, but they don't use it. What good is, good is it if you just memorize and you don't use it at the right time? You have to use the scriptures and you fight it. So if there's any temptation for stealing, some people, you know, <laughs> I have a temptation to eat sometimes a lot of food. If I have potato chips, I have the temptation to eat the whole bag. Just go and eat and eat. So you have to fight. You have to fight it with the word of God. Whatever the temptation is, we have to fight it with the word of God, not our own willpower. We cannot use our willpower. Because why? Because we are Christians. Once you're Christian, your life is sold out to Jesus. Jesus is your life now. So therefore, you cannot use your own willpower to do anything. You will fail. Instead, you need to fight the devil and the demons with the word of God. Amen. So first one is what? Words create. Second, words can destroy. Third is words can fight temptation. Amen. Amen. Fourth one is words fight battles. What is it? Words can fight battles. Amen. Amen. Okay. First Samuel 17, David versus Goliath. Oh, what, one of my favorite. I have to say, on the Old Testament, two of my favorite guys are David and Daniel. And the New Testament, it's Paul. But anyway, um, so the David, First Samuel 17, we, in Sunday school, this is the lesson that we learned, number one, first lesson. Okay, so uh, let me read the Bible. 1 Samuel 17, 10. 10 says, the giant who Goliath said, that's the devil. Pretend that's the devil, okay? Devil says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Amen. Devil was saying, okay, if you have any... Any, anything, just come fight with me. You can't fight. You guys are so small. Look at you. That's what they're saying. That's what he, um, Goliath said. I, you know this story well, but I love this story. Oh, my goodness. What's that? First Samuel 17, 45. Then David said to Philistine, look at this. This is what you have to say to the devils when he comes and tests you. What does he say? Okay, 1 Samuel 17, 45. David said, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the birds of the air and wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. 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 Oh, You know what? Think about this. David was a little boy, a teenager, young kid, not experienced, not in the army. All of the big commanders who were trained of years and years and years, they are standing there so afraid of this giant. They were this little child, little kid, just went and talked to this giant. Look at the face of the giant without any he hesitation said, you, I'm talking to you, directly talking to you. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew, speak. To the mountain, speak to the mountain, speak to your problem. Don't talk to God about your problem, speak to your problem. You have to speak to your own mountain, boldly and courageously you have to speak. Where did David got this? 
He didn't quote the scripture. Some people say, oh, you can only quote scripture. No, I disagree. Of course, you have to quote the scripture when it's appropriate. But sometimes God will give you the unction and say, you devil, do not touch me. If, if, if devil comes with a sickness, you need to say, no, not here. Out. In the name of Jesus. Out. You need to get out. You have no power or authority over me. If you, anybody struggle with depression or anxiety, let me tell you, you need to rise up. Do not say, oh, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling bad. No, don't do that. Don't encourage it. Stand up and say, you, spirit of depression, spirit of anxiety, go in the name of Jesus. Go. Get out. You have no place. No place. This is the temple of the living God. You have no place inside of me. You need to be bold and courageous. You have to fight like a, the little boy David in front of all the brothers. I, have, I can't even imagine. Where did he get the strength from? I know where he got the strength from. When he was alone, he was worshiping. He was praising God. He was energetic. He, he was ready for the battle. You know what? One thing, one thing a man of God said, you're either going through a battle or you're in the battle or you're out, outside of the battle, okay? These are the only two things. So when you don't have a serious battle that you're fighting, you better prepare for the next battle. The battle is coming. Don't be complacent. When you have a decent life or easy life, oh, yeah, I have good grades, you know. I mean, I have decent income now coming. Yeah, I can, I can be a little light on the prayer. God knows. No, this is the time you study the word of God. You memorize the scripture. You practice. You go at it. So that when the battle comes, you're ready to fight. Just like David said, who are you? You uncircumcised Philistine. Who? How did you come here? Who told you to come here? Uncircumcised Philistine. He called it out, right? That's exactly what. Yes, so that, that is, that is a, the David story always encourages me. These Old Testament stories are for edification. Let me tell you, there are times at work that I say, God, this is a lot of battle. I can't handle it. I am not qualified. I'm, I don't even have the degrees that people at my work has or the direct reports that I have. I, I am not at all qualified. I am inherently shy and timid. God, I pray these are giants. You, then God always encouraged me with that little David. No, when the devil tells you, oh, you're not good enough. You're just average. Oh, look at you. You're not any. Look at these people. Look at how they talk. They're all intimidating. They went to Harvard. They went to Yale. Which school did you go to? You went to a no-name school. When the devil says all these things, I said, you, shut up. I am the child of the almighty God. You need to say that. You have to be bold and courageous. Why is this? Because we are in a battlefield. This is not a playground. This is not a playground. This is a battlefield. Every day you're fighting the demonic realm. So you have to be put on the full armor of God. Full armor and ready to fight constantly. You're not, you're not just passively saying, oh, yeah, hi, uh, and, do, and sing a little bit, little worship song. Worship songs are good, but you have to fight. Amen? Okay, so first one was words create. Second one, words can destroy. Third is words fight temptation. Fourth one is words fight battles. Amen. The last one is words give us salvation. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Um, Romans chapter 10. These are all familiar verses. Number, uh, verse 10. For with the heart... One believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made through 
the mouth. Why is, okay, have you ever thought of why Jesus said salvation comes through confession? Because words, death and life are in the power of your, your tongue. Not Jesus' tongue, your tongue. That's why you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised, us, raised him from the dead. That's how you get saved. You have to confess with your mouth. So then if, think about this, if God of the universe said that for, for us to be born again, you need to believe and you need to confess. Those two sin, things we have to do with your mouth, how much more you think the power of our tongue is. Because that is the power of the tongue. I always said, God, why, do, why can't you just do a miracle? If I really says, God, I believe you as Jesus the Lord, just do a miracle. No, you have to confess it with your mouth. Words have to come out of your mouth. Words have to come out of your mouth. It is powerful. It's a powerful weapon. This week at work, there I had some issues and things. You know, I was walking around. In, in, uh, what I do is, um, I, I moved to a new building now. So uh, next to my office is a big conference room. And usually nobody uses it. So I can kind of go in there. So I have my leadership meetings or team meetings in that conference room. So most of the time it's not used. So it's great for me because I use my office. And sometimes I go in the conference room. Why? To walk around and Pray because it's huge. So I can just walk around the, the, the conference room and just pray. So I was actually, something hit me or something disturbed. So I went to the conference room and I spoke out all of these things that I said. No weapons formed against me will prosper. No weapons formed against me will prosper. They cannot prosper because I am the heritage of the Lord. I am the child of the Most High God. Greater is he that is in me than it is in the world. You speak the word. You, when you, the, the one thing I noticed is, I used to, back in the day I used to be shy, a little bit shy. It's hard to believe, but I used to be very shy. But what I realized is when you speak the word loud, there is something happens in the atmosphere. It does. Try it loud. And if you say, hallelujah, just loud, I am telling you, your, I mean, any depression or anxiety or anything will Flee at your own word because you're speaking life into the atmosphere, life into the situation. I said, no, death and life are in the power of your tongue. I, my tongue, it's not Jesus' tongue, my tongue, God, I'm speaking life into the situation, life into this death situation. Death, death, uh, death situation, I'm going to, Ezekiel talk, God said, speak to the army, right, the dead the dead, dead skeletons, and revive them. You speak to the dead. You speak to Lazarus. Lazarus, come out! With that word, Lazarus, who is dead, came out. Words, power of words. Please, I'm begging everybody, do not speak, do not stay depressed. Not, do not be anxious. I, the anxiety, especially in the modern world, anxiety and depression, it is so prevalent. Mental disease is astronomical. The amount of money my company spent on mental disorders, mental this, mental health awareness month, mental health awareness week, mental, mental, everybody is depressed or anxious. Lord, I, I'm going to, we're going to pray together. Today, when we speak it loud, no enemy, no demonic realm can have access to our minds. You need to say and speak it boldly and say, no, not here. No, not in my, I will not give power to you in my head or my brain. No real estate. You can't come here. You cannot come here. You need to get it out. Let me give you another 
Another tip that I live by, you know, I, I also go through some anxiety or some work problem or something like that. But long time ago, I saw a woman preacher preached that when she suffers from any type of anxiety or any problem, etc., what she does is then and there she prays until the anxiety leaves. She will not move. I love that. I love that. When you are burdened, you don't need to walk around. Because what happens is then you start picking up all these energy, low energy, this and that. And the devil will tell you, oh, look at you, this and that. No. Then and there. Why am I feeling? Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Who, you have to talk to your soul. So what is soul? Your mind, will, and emotion. All these three comprise of the soul. You have to talk to your soul and say, bless the Lord. Don't be depressed. Bless the Lord. Until you get out of that, uh, that, that uh, rut of anxiety or anything, you need to sit and pray. You need to walk and pray. You need to speak in tongues and pray. You need to do whatever it takes. Worship, prayer, everything. Until you feel peace. What is the word of God says in Philippians 4? Do not be anxious of anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace that passeth all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So until the peace of God comes in, you're not done yet. Don't just pray, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. No, no. I'm still fe feeling the anxiety. No, it has to go. You need to command it to go. You put the worship song on. You praise and worship. Say hallelujah. Jump up and down. Whatever it takes, you need to get rid of this. Because we are living in a perilous world. But good news is God has given all the tools that's required. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has already instilled in us. First Peter 2. So therefore, you don't need to worry. You don't need to be anxious. God is on our side. If God is for you, who can be against you? So with that, I'm going to pray that God will help you to speak the right words. And if you don't have good words to speak, zip it. Don't say it. No need to complain. Whine. Israelites complained and whined. Guess what happened? They all died. When you complain and whine... Your dreams will die. You don't want that. You need to speak God's words. God-inspired words. Like look at all the David story. You uncircumcised Philistine, get out. Go in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray. Ho rama rashi kora baba ba raka maria shoto raba ba ena mara ya raba shikoria baba ba ba ria shanda raba ba ba papa. Heavenly Papa, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful time, O oh God. I thank you, Jesus, for this time that you talk about the words, the creative power of the words, that things that you taught me while I work, while I, I'm home, etc., that really helped me to get to the next level, God. Father, I pray that whatever words I spoke, anything good, help it to flourish to be 30, 60, and 100 folds. Anything that is not against the word of God or any, anything that I spoke, even frivolous, priv, frivolously, let it fall to the ground and die. I pray that let it all flourish, God. I thank you. Bless every single one. I also pray for the spirit of depression and anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus and do not come back. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Spirit of joy, love, and peace invade this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your wonderful sharing. So can we give
a uh, big applause to our God and our speaker tonight. So, multi-team, would you please pop up the cheering group teams? So all the leaders, please come out and introduce your teams. Hi, my name is Colin, and um, my team member is Hannah, Grace, James, John, Lucy, and Elsa. Hi, my name is Peter, and my team members are Moses, Timothy, Daniel, Job, Mary, Hanny, and Amy. Hello, this is Eric, and my, my team members are Steve, Rachel, Louis, Charlie, Ben, Maria, Lucy, and Hi, I'm Gracie, and I'm Pink Team. My team member is Lisa, Sarah, Young, Pastor Amparo, and Chris, and Ben. Hello, I'm Peace. So my team members are Gio, Jenny, Esther, Sam, Juliana, Gage, and Tom. Uh, hi, I'm Tina. Um, purple team leader and my team members are Evan, Olivia, Leah, Eden, Joyce, Jim, Tom. I'm Nathan, who is leader of light, light green teams. So my member is Isaac, Matthew, Faith, Adam, Amanda, and John. Yes. So hi, my name is Natasha from... Sky Blue team with Grace, Michael, Julie, Joey, and, and Janet. Hi, um, Luna, and uh, our team is Black, and Daniel, Donna, Luz, Sua, Kat, Tyson, and Tina, you're our team. Uh, hi, my name is Belle, and I'm a leader of Deep Blue team. So our members are actually Hezkaya, Lucas, Gloria, Carolina, Jenny, Joy, and Joe. Uh, um, my name is Ted. I'm um, a leader of Green Team. Um, this is um, actual Lishan and David, Natina, and John, and Ben, and Pam. Uh, hello, my name is Jenny, and I'm the a leader of Brown Team, and my team member is Chris, Paul, Eunice, Chine, I, I, Isaac, Sandy and Hannah. Yeah. So from now on. So these are great uh, student leaders. But in our midst, we have uh, seasoned pastors and leaders and uh, quite a few spiritual leaders. So as you form and work together with these students, you can really uh, at times jump in and also share your spiritual insight so that they can also learn from you. And the student also have a great way of looking at things from a different perspective. Maybe you and I uh, have grown up. So if we can kind of with a respectful mind, uh, open to each other and uh, really um, listening to each other, I think we can learn a lot. And the Spirit of God can really rain upon and all the great things uh, we can share to edify uh, His kingdom. So let's do that.
불 덜추냐? 피그! 
Uh -uh. So we are going to share until 45. We have 12 minutes, 12 minutes more. So please focus on your sharing and share the your grace. Thank you.
Uh, so we just have a minute. So please wrap it up your sharing with prayer and ready to pray to God. Thank you.
Okay, good evening. Uh, can you wrap it up in one minute? Because we are going to pray together. Especially before a student comes out uh, to lead the prayer, I want to invite Kathleen. Kathleen? Is it Kathleen here? Kathleen, can you come? Kathleen is our friend. She comes to our fire worship. Her mom, her mom adopted Kathleen when she was three months old from Korea. And she raised her, this beautiful lady, and to become a beautiful baby. But about a few days ago, maybe a few weeks ago, they found her mom's cancers, two cancers growing. But as today, as the speaker, Mr., uh, the, Dr. Julie said, we don't talk about the problem, right? We can speak to the cancer, amen? We can shout out to the cancer, get out of Kathleen's mom. We're going to pray for Kathleen's mom. Doctor said at the hospital, she doesn't have many days. She will die soon. But, you know, that's not God's verdict, right? That's only doctor's verdict. So we're going to trust God. Amen? Amen? We're going to pray for Kathleen and her mom because the life and death is up to God, not, not up to the doctor. So we're going to all cry out for Kathleen and Kathleen's mom and her family because she's still alive. That means that God can continue his, her life. Amen? So let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Pray for Kathleen, our dear friend, came from Korea. And her mom and her daddy adopted her and her brother from Korea. And they raised these beautiful children and with the faith. So we're going to pray together in our strong faith. Let's pray for Kathleen's mom. Her name is Heather. You can call out Heather's name, Miss Heather. Dear Jesus, Miss Heather, Kathleen's mom, is, is on your hand. We know that you have a power. You are the owner. You are the creator. You are the healer. You are the owner of our life. Not any doctor. Not anyone talks about our life. You have authority to continue her life. So we're going to pray for Kat Heather, Miss Heather and Kathleen's mom. Let's everybody, let's cry out to God, to our Jesus, our healer, our our helper our like a guider our life keeper let's call out jesus name everybody let's pray jesus
are our daddy. Yes, Lord. So we give you our praise. We give you all our concern and worries to you. You told us that don't be afraid because I am with you and I am your God. We are not afraid. We can talk to the cancers. Get out of her body. Cancer, you get out of Miss Heather's body. We command cancers. Get out. Get out. Go away. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. In Jesus' name, we command cancer cells. Get out. Get out of body. Father, Daddy, when we visit her yesterday, even the nurse assistant said, she doesn't have a hope. She's in stage with a hospice. But we don't trust their word. We trust your word. And we entrust everything to your hands. We entrust Miss Heather into your heart. We uplift her to your throne. We know that without faith, you received her. And you are going to heal her. Jesus, you are the healer. You are the victor. You are the life giver. Daddy, Father, your name is hope. Even though doctors say there is no hope, yes, you are hope. You are a hope. We're going to believe in you. Father, Daddy, thank you so much. At least Kathleen called me and asked me help. So we all went out. About five girls went out to the hospital yesterday together. We sang for her and her family. We uplifted her and then whole Everybody was crying in there. Yes, Jesus, thank you so much for being our Savior, our lover, our victor. You already won the battle already. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That's why we are going to praise you. We are going to honor you. We worship you. Nevertheless, we will love you. No matter what happens, we love you. We will praise you. But we know that. Your love already poured upon Kathleen and her mom, Heather, and her whole family. Thank you so much for being our savior, for our guider, for our comforter, for our life giver. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We glorify you. Even in this difficult time, we are not afraid. We are going to look upon you. Be with Kathleen. She will never, ever say anything negative. She will speak out all hopeful words for her mom. When Kathleen goes back to home, she will talk to mom. Mommy, Jesus is with you. Mommy, Jesus can heal you. Mommy, you have a hope because we all pray to you, for you. And then... express themselves with negative words, negative feelings. They say they're depressed, they're anxious, they're stressed. But God, help us to learn from you that we don't feel those. God, help us to change this world, to help them come back
back to you. Um, many people are lost. They don't know where they are, who they are. God, help us to lead them to the right path, to the right way, to the right life, where uh, they know who they are. They know who they can trust. They know um, what they can do with you in their life, God. Just help them, just teach them what's right and what's wrong. With your help, we can do anything. We can live what's good and what's not good. But God, just, just guide us, just give us the power, the ability to share your word, the gospel that you wanted us to live by. God, just help us, guide us, give us the words to give out to the lost, to help them know what's love, to know what's peace, to know what's joy. So in that way, they know who you are, they know what love is, they know brought to us to this community, God. And just let us know one another, just become a such good friends, such a good community, so that we can go out together and to battle all the evil things, all the evil spirits, all the devil, all the evil things that the devil can bring to us, God. With this in mind, let us shout Jesus' name once and pray. Jesus!
that for the message that was just talked about that, that this society that for this prayer for society this society they have no justice they have no justice in God's name but, but we know that, that God is the love and justice that we also pray for this revival that that's, this revival it starts from ourselves and it goes to share the gospel all over this and share the blessings and for for prayer for the people that who are who are having the temptations who are having Our deep struggles, we're having frustrations they have. Let us all be healed in the name of Jesus. And let this society will be will have a justice from God. That through this for for God's name, God is the real justice for us. In this prayer request, let's shout Jesus' name once on the count of three and let us pray. One, two, three. Jesus,
that this word of God will overcome this world. This word of God will redeem us. This word of God gives justice because God is love and justice. Through this, the world has injustice that the real justice is from you. We always thank you. We always pray in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for praise team. Tonight, uh, there are some people came from Korea and even from China for the, to be here for the first time. I want to love, I want to invite you, all of you to come up so that we can bless you. Uh, from uh, Pohang Handong University, which is like a Witten College in America. It's like a Harvard, Christian Harvard University. <laughs> this is I name it. Uh, eight student, one from uh, Busan uh, uh, Foreigner English, uh, some kind of some university. The eight student came from Korea, so can you come forward? And Jiwon, John Song from China, he came here, so we loved him by this step. And then anyone here for the first time in this fire worship, we love to invite you to bless you. Just please come forward. So, John Song, welcome you. Would you like to say something? Okay. So, Jie, would you like to say something? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes, you can say anything. God bless you. Thank you for welcoming. And Songyeol, Songyeol Sam. Um, I really appreciate God that He leads us to uh, this place. So I'm really looking forward to His work uh, throughout the journey here. So, um, yeah, God will do it. Amen. She was very, very good, and <laughs> yeah, it was very nice and good. And thanks, God, thanks, Lord, to um, be here with you. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for welcoming, and just loves us. Thank you. Evangelists progress, not pilgrims progress, evangelists progress. So every day after they learn English in the morning, they go out to the world to share the good news. That's why. And then yesterday and today they went out and they had a wonderful time. So uh, we love to bless you. So everyone, can you stand up, go around? I invite all of you to put your hands toward them and we're going to bless them. Just come around, especially adults. Even the adult leaders, can you come around and put your hands behind them? Put your others, Dr. Julie, and teachers, and Thomas, and even teachers, anyone? Uh, is it Pastor Umparo and Natina, Tom? 
Can you put your hands toward behind them? Yes, okay. But you also remind us when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive a power and you will be my witness. You even told the people, Father, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that you will be even doing greater things than what Jesus has done. Oh, Holy God, we believe and confess that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask, Father, that you will anoint each one of us so that we can do things, Father, to lift you up, lift your name up, lift your glory up. We ask, Father, that you will give them the power to go out and witness your name powerfully. We ask, Father, that you will give them the power, believing in the name of Jesus Christ, by casting away all the evil spirit. We ask, Father, that you will touch their hearts so that they will go out with the power of your love to bring the people together. We ask, Father, Father that you will remember Catherine's mom, Miss Heather, 
that she is under your control that we ask father that you will anoint her we ask father that in the name of jesus christ that cancer will be completely be casted away oh holy god we ask father that your healing touch be upon them oh holy god we ask father that you will use all of us your house to go out and witness your name so that all the nations will come to know you that you are god you are the living god you are god who is still alive oh holy god bless everyone especially we ask father that you will remember all these students standing in your presence and bless them and use them mightily during this summer time to go out and witness your name so that the amazing things of your kingdom will be accomplished through them we praise you and we bless your name in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I have a quick announcement before we sing and close this worship. Uh, today, uh, we don't have fire worship dessert as I uh, announced last week. We are going to like a continue with the prayer. The prayer music will come upon here, but impact student, all of our impact student will have an urgent meeting at the fellowship hall. So because tomorrow morning we have a parents meeting, urgent meeting, so we all need together. Maybe worship team, you didn't eat dinner yet. Worship team eat dinner, and maybe 1045 we'll have a meeting at the fellowship hall. And a Hill student and then PIC, you didn't take shower yesterday. You didn't brush, you didn't wash face like me. So go to home. Go to, go to your dormitory and take a shower and brush and wash and then go to sleep. And then tomorrow, everybody sleep late. Woo! Sleep late. <laughs> I think we are going to have a, a breakfast at 9.30. So you have a free time till 9.30. And so 9.30 breakfast and 10 to 11 is the community Bible reading together. As Dr. Julie said, Reading Bible, knowing God's word, and memorizing God's word is your weapon, right? So we always cherish reading Bible and get, getting to know his word and then memorizing it. So everybody will gather at the fellowship hall at 10 o'clock for community Bible reading. So everybody, let's go. Let's finish up this one. Okay. Woo!